I was casually scrolling through my video's comment section when I read a comment by Rag. And he said, make some Rick Owen pants made with the ball and banana ones. And I was like, okay. And then I read the last part of his comment. He said, bet you can't. I bet. So I started doing my research, trying to find and look at the pants at as many different angles that I can find, the width of the opening when fully unzipped, the size of the pants when the pants are fully zipped, the angle of the zippers, the length of the zippers, the taper, the materials, anything I can use to recreate these pants and beat this challenge that Rack said I couldn't do. This was a joke, by the way. Thank you, Rack, for your suggestion. But today, I'm gonna work on these thrifted trousers that are actually too big for me on the waist. They're a size 36, which is three sizes too big, but is essential since I wanna make these pants high-waisted. So the first alteration that I have to do is to bring the waist down enough so that it'll fit comfortably right below my belly button. I marked on the waistband where the middle is and the two points where I want the waistband to conjoin to make the new waist size as a reference for later. I'm not sure if all trousers are made like this, but the back of the waistband was only held down by a few stitches on the back seam. Now this was super convenient for me since I wanted to make these alterations, so maybe for future projects, dockers might be the way to go if I have to work on trousers. I separated the waistband from the back panels just enough for me to take it in, and then started separating the middle back seam all the way down to almost where it crosses the inseam. I then joined the edges together and drew in the guideline for the new seam. This right here is how I'm going to resize the back panels, hopefully it works. So I clipped it to hold it in place and then pinned it to really secure it, a little overkill, but you know, it is what it is. So I'm gonna just follow this line and then I can just refold this, iron it down, make the trimmings that I need, and that should be good. And then we can move on to the waistband. This took a couple of tries to get right. It's important, of course, to get the right fit at the waist, but it's also really important to make sure that the seam itself is comfortable and won't ride up your thing. You know? So it was a lot of marking, pinning, trying on, and repeat until I got it right. With the edges lined up and the new guy lines drawn in and pinned, I sewed in the new back seam. I didn't want to do anything complicated for the waistband adjustment, so all I did was cut the waistband straight down the middle so that all I have to do is overlap the two ends, making sure that it's the same size and is lined up to the newly altered back panels. I decided to hand sew the two ends together. It definitely would have been faster to just use my sewing machine, but I honestly just felt like hand sewing at the time, so that's what I did. I started by sewing in a couple of knots to hold the ends together and then sew them in at their edges, making sure to keep the knots at both ends of the stitches hidden to make it look clean. Okay, this part was a little confusing, but I think I got it figured out. So basically where the zipper starts is gonna be where the narrowest part of the pant legs will be because I do plan on tapering this to about eight inches. So what I did here is actually wrong. I should actually measure uh, the eight inches where the 29 inch where the zipper will start actually so measure 29 inches right here make that mark and then from there make the taper it won't taper lower than eight inches basically because the pants have a relaxed fit the next step is to taper them to give them a slimmer fit so i opened up the hems and made the necessary markings and guidelines to taper the pants in Like always, before finalizing the alteration, I tried on the pants to make sure it had the fit that I wanted, and when it did, I sewed in the new out seams. Okay, after going back and forth with a lot of different things, I came up that you're supposed to add, or we have to add in an extra 6.75 inches to both panels to add the extensions, and then from there, we can start adding in the flare extension. What is it even called? I set aside the base trousers and brought out the spare ones I thrifted so I can cut it up for the extensions. I measured the length plus a seam allowance of how much I wanted to extend the pants and cut them out at the bottom of both pant legs, giving me two equal front and back panels for both legs on the main trousers. I opened up the seams on the main trousers at about an inch and a half so I can sew on the extensions with clean seams. I 
especially since these pants are really long and would probably be dragged on the ground a lot when worn, I hemmed both pant legs to prevent fraying and to seal the seams. Here's how the pants look like so far tried on. You can see that it sits comfortably below my belly button so it is high waisted and the pants are baggy because of the extensions. I'm just hoping that it isn't too long or worst case it's too short because that would suck. But now we're on the scary part. This is where I have to cut up the pants to make you know the slit for the zipper but I'm cutting it. I only have one chance at that. And if I mess up, I ain't doing this again. <laughs> but the zipper's gonna start, like I said, right here. And it's gonna go up and around. I don't really know where it should contact the outseam here, but it's gonna go and around, and of course, to the butt area, and then back down. <sighs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kinda nervous. <laughs> you know, the easiest way to get over being nervous is to just do it. You've done enough thinking, just do. I ended up using two different sizes of zippers. One size was 24 inches and the other was 29 inches. I probably spent about an hour and a half trying to make sure that I got the placements right for each zipper. It was a lot of marking, pinning, unpinning, then repinning, then trying it on to make sure that it looks right. It was a lot of work, but this part is one of the most important parts of this DIY, so I definitely didn't rush it. One of my main goals here was to make sure that the zipper going down my leg never scrunches up when I'm either sitting or standing, which also took a lot of trial and error. Originally, my plan was to cut a really long line from one end of the pants around to the other side like that. I think I'm gonna cut out three different lines. So I'm gonna start right here, cut this up, then leave like a little gap right here. And then I can move on to cutting this one right here, all the way around, and then uh, do the same thing on this side here, all the way to here. And I think this way is a lot safer too, because then I can really just cut the length of the zipper rather than accounting for three at the same time. But now we're gonna start cutting out the pants to add in the zippers as well as the extensions. When you're cutting, it's always better to have cut too little at first rather than cutting too much because you can always cut more, but you, know, you can't uncut what's already been cut. Reality is kind of crazy, right? All right, so the first cut has been made now for that flare extension panel, whatever it's called. I think I have to make it in like this shape where you can see it cones out starting from the top and it's at a slant that when it hits 29 inches or the end of the zipper, it goes straight down. I cut out the pant legs from spare trousers and separated them at the seams so I can sew them together to extend their lengths since they weren't long enough. After ironing the seam to make the extended extension fabric smooth, I drew in the outline of the panel extension, similarly to the markings I make when adding a flare panel to pants. It's one of those times when all those skills and techniques used in other projects are coming in clutch, just in different variations. I decided to shorten them a little bit. They're just way too baggy, honestly. They're pretty much unwearable, but I was looking at pictures, uh, different angles, of course. And yeah, mines were definitely too long. I'm gonna take off like maybe two and a half inches and go from there. I originally increased the length to 38 inches, but it was really hard to walk when I tried them on. So trimming them down was inevitable. Also, if you haven't noticed, these sewing clips are so useful and convenient. Of course, there are a lot of things that only pins can reach, but when it comes to holding fabrics together, these clips for sure are the way, sturdy and everything. Because I didn't hem the cut edges of the trousers and just sewed them onto the zippers, I hand sewed along the raw edges to not only secure the edges from fraying, but to also add a trim design since you can't see the zippers well since the trousers in itself are just too dark. The extensions on the other hand, I folded the edges before sewing them onto the zippers so their edges won't fray. The process for the zipper on the butt area was the same as the legs. I pinned the zipper in place, marked the cutout line, and sewed the zipper in. This area doesn't have an extension on the inside, so yeah, everything's gonna hang out when it's unzipped. The last thing to do was the final touch-ups, making sure the raw edges were sewn in so they wouldn't fray, and cutting out the strands of fabric that were already frayed to make it all look clean. 